Welcome back to another disturbing journey in the southern underworld. But before we get started, I'd like to ask you to please like, comment, subscribe, and share this devilish delight with your horror friends and fam. Engagement is essential, and it helps our little channel grow. In tonight's terrifying tale, we meet Gretchen, a pregnant young woman with a horrifying secret and unusual craving. As she struggles with guilt and the changes in her body, she realizes that people around her, including her husband Tom, have begun to disappear. Metallic Craving During my pregnancy, I developed an unusual craving for the taste of copper. The flavor was intense, like sucking on a battery, but it provided me with an inexplicable sense of comfort. As time moved on, my cravings grew stronger. I secretly collected pennies I'd nibble on to satisfy this peculiar desire when the urge overwhelmed me. However, one evening the coins no longer satisfied me. I needed more. Frantic internet searches led me to Pika, a condition characterized by an appetite for non-food items. One night, while watching a documentary about animal cannibalism, the narrator's words resonated with me. Cannibalism is a primal response to ensure survival. This unnerving statement made me realize it wasn't just metal I craved. I craved human flesh, so I disguised myself in dark clothing and went hunting. In the dead of night, my senses sharpened. Heartbeats echoed around me like drums calling me to action. I was hungry, and it was a harsh reminder of what I'd become. My first victim was a homeless man who had found shelter on the stone steps of an old cathedral. As I knelt next to him, the smell of his dirty skin mixed with a metallic scent that coursed chills along my spine. He woke up just as my teeth sunk into his flesh, far too late for him to scream out against my newfound strength. What did it taste like? Think about biting into a live wire with flavors rich in copper and iron exploding in your mouth and rushing through your veins. It felt right, natural, and yet totally terrifying. With each passing day, my condition worsened and my insatiable hunger for human flesh grew stronger with each meal. Each feast was more satisfying than the last, each blood-soaked morsel boosting my energy. My skin glowed and my senses heightened beyond human comprehension. My body changed in ways I couldn't imagine. I wasn't just expecting anymore. I had turned into something alien. As the life grew inside me, so did the cravings. Just smelling another person made me drool and triggered an appetite that echoed in my gut. Night after night, hidden under layers of pitch-black darkness, I roamed the city streets, stalking my prey. But for every life taken, a guilt crept over me, icing my veins like frostbite. The faces of those whose lives I'd taken haunted my dreams. Somewhere deep inside me, a warning rang out. This couldn't go on forever. Payback was coming. People were catching on. Rumors from the police intensified when people around me began disappearing one after another. I knew the cops would soon connect the dots. Police sirens wailing in the distance became a common background noise while news channels buzzed with stories about my horrifying deeds. The city was on the edge of panic, its people frozen by an unseen terror. Despite the noose tightening around me, the beast inside roared louder, laughing at my guilt and basking in the raw power. It loved the fear it inspired. One fateful night, as the life inside me squirmed restlessly, I found myself standing over yet another victim. A child this time, too young and innocent. Her soft crying echoed in the quiet room, unaware of the predator lurking nearby. I stopped then, my heart pounding in my chest. My shadow cast by a dim nightlight painted a monstrous figure on the wall, a horrifying silhouette bloated with pregnancy and wrapped in darkness. The sight shocked me. Panicked, I fled to my home, exhausted, disgusted, still ravenous. A sudden knock at the door startled me. Gretchen, it's Detective Reyes. My heart pounded in fear. Why was he here? I had already told him that Tom, my husband, was out of town for work. Quickly, I hid the jar of pennies under my bed and attempted to regain my composure before opening the door to Reyes. He looked concerned as his gaze swept over me. Can we discuss Tom? He asked softly. I have more questions about the night he disappeared. I silently nodded as he stepped inside. A foul odor hit me. Not copper this time, but something far more repugnant coming from Reyes. It made me lurch forward, clutching onto a chair for support. Tom's co-workers reported that he never showed up at his conference, Reyes stated matter-of-factly, suspicion clouding his expression. His car was found abandoned on a highway shoulder. Can you tell me what happened the night he left? I... I'm not sure. 
I stuttered unconvincingly. He seemed fine when he left. Maybe car trouble? As Reyes moved closer, sniffing curiously at the air, panic caused me to back into a table knocking over a picture frame that shattered on impact. I stooped to pick up the torn photo from the icy concrete floor. Reyes and I shared a look, both of us staring at the picture. It was old and faded, but you could still make out young Tom and me, grinning like idiots under a bright summer sun. We were so happy then before everything went wrong. You kept this, Reyes said quietly, picking up an old penny from the mess on the floor. He held it up to the dim light coming in through the dusty windows. We found one of these by Tom's abandoned car. His eyes were heavy on me, filled with a weird mix of pity and doubt. I could almost hear his thoughts, strange disappearances, Tom's sudden absence, my odd behavior. I became acutely aware of my surroundings. The strong smell of Reyes's cologne made me feel sick while something inside me stirred, a hunger that hit me in waves. I felt an overwhelming urge to taste metal again. Reyes didn't notice my internal struggle as he put away the penny and continued questioning me. His words became background noise as I zeroed in on his heartbeat, each beat echoing in the quiet room. My stomach twisted, repulsed, and starved at once. Mrs. Miller? His voice snapped me back to reality. Are you okay? You look pale. I... I'm fine, I stuttered out, forcing myself to focus on his face instead of his heartbeat. The room spun around me, making Reyes's face blur. I need to sit. With shaky hands, I pointed toward a wobbly wooden chair nearby. As I sat down heavily into it, I fought off an urge to grab Reyes's wrist and satisfy the hunger inside me. Low blood sugar, maybe, Reyes suggested with worry lines creasing his forehead as he reached for his phone. No, my response was sharper than I meant it to be. No, I said again, softer this time. I'm fine, detective, just pregnancy issues. Reyes didn't seem convinced but put away his phone. Okay, he agreed slowly. We still need to talk about Tom and the other disappearances. He sat down across from me, his eyes full of caution and curiosity. He didn't trust me. Did you notice anything unusual about Tom before he left? His gaze was intense. Tom always kept to himself, I replied softly, barely above a whisper. Work stress, I added quickly. Reyes looked doubtful but didn't push further. There's a pattern in each disappearance, last seen after sunset, missing by morning. His words sent a chill down my spine. Was he accusing me or just sharing information? Gathering my courage, I asked, Detective, how is this related to Tom? He's not missing, he's on business. That's the problem, he replied calmly, crossing one leg over the other. No one has heard from him since he left. His phone is off, and as I mentioned earlier, we found his car abandoned on the highway. I pretended to be shocked, but inside I was terrified. They had found Tom's car. Does it bother you that your husband hasn't contacted you since he left? Reyes continued. Yes, of course, but that doesn't mean he wouldn't just leave. Reyes fell silent before leaning back in his chair. I hope you're right, Mrs. Miller, he said gently. As he got up to leave, he sniffed the air again and headed toward the bathroom down the hall. May I... Wait... Before I could stop him, a wave of sickness hit me, causing everything around me to spin as I clutched my stomach. A soft whimper escaped my lips as I felt sharp pains radiating from my stomach. Reyes was already halfway down the hall following his instincts and nose. My heart pounded in fear as he opened the door, revealing what lay beyond. Tom's decaying body in a bathtub filled with blood-red water. Reyes recoiled in shock, his hand instinctively reaching for his gun. He turned toward me, eyes widening in disbelief as he saw me doubled over in pain. His detective instincts took over and he fumbled with his radio, attempting to call for backup, but I couldn't let him do that. I fell to the ground, clutching my belly, creating a momentary distraction that worked. Reyes knelt over me, his calloused fingers brushing my pulsing wrist. Suddenly I attacked, biting into the soft skin of his neck and hitting a major artery. His blood gushed out like a burst pipe the metallic smell filling the air. He stumbled back, clutching at his bloody neck with wide-eyed shock and fear. I felt an intense hunger as I watched his blood flow out. His police radio buzzed with garbled messages and commands as he fell to the ground. He looked at me one last time. There was fear and betrayal in his eyes before they glazed over with death. Reyes was dead because of me, another victim to my monstrous side. 
Drinking the detective's blood was satisfying. It stilled the beast inside me for a while. The baby in my belly kicked hard, obviously enjoying the meal too. I felt more alert as the dizziness faded away. I wiped my mouth clean, savoring the taste of iron mixed with fear. The pain hit me. It was excruciating and it brought me to my knees. I was going into labor. It felt like being stabbed repeatedly with hot knives. The beast inside roared with eager anticipation. My last victim had been a cop. He didn't have time to call for backup, but someone would eventually start looking for him. As the morning light peeked over the horizon, I held my newborn son, his skin so soft, with no clue about what kind of food had helped him grow inside me. Tears filled my eyes, not from happiness but fear. The hunger wouldn't go away, it was always there waiting. The sound of sirens in the distance broke through the quiet morning, their wails growing louder with each heartbeat. I held my baby tighter, scared of what might happen next. They were coming for me. They would catch me. They would take him away from me. I picked up a cold, heavy gun and whispered, I'm sorry, to him. But mommy will always protect you. The taste of warm metal filled my mouth again. I took a moment to savor it before I pressed the barrel against my temple. Then everything went dark. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. See you next time. Thank you for watching. Thank you.